Welcome to the second GDAL tutorial. Today we will look at raster data and the following functions. GDAL info to obtain information on your raster data set. GDAL edit to manipulate this information. GDAL translate to convert between different raster formats, but also to resample your raster data to a different resolution. And finally, GDAL warp, whose main purpose it is to reproject data to a different coordinate system. But we can also use this function to clip our raster data to a polygon or a predefined coordinate extent. Everything we are going to do today will run from the command line. And as this is an introduction to GDAL, I suspect that there are not many of you who have yet ventured out of the safe havens of Q or ArcGIS. So before we get started with all these GDAL commands, I have a short introduction on the command line interface. If you're already a command line pro, feel free to skip ahead. The command line interface looks like this. On Mac or Ubuntu, you will get here by searching for the terminal and opening this application. And on Windows, you simply search for the command prompt and open it. Now, first of all, please don't be afraid to use the command line. I know it can look quite scary, but it's really not that complicated. There are great advantages to using a command line interface rather than a graphical user interface. Usually with the command line you're much faster and more flexible. When you're processing geospatial data you don't have to open a program like QGIS for example and load in a bunch of files because you can access and process your files directly from the terminal. Also you can create small shell scripts which you can execute from the terminal to process your data automatically. This is also a great option if you want to repeat the process over and over again, maybe for a different dataset or maybe at a different time. In QGIS it can be that you don't really remember precisely all the parameters that you used while working with your data. However, if you have stored your commands in a shell script, you could just run that again and you will get exactly the same results. Working with a terminal is not hard at all. There are only two commands that you really need to know. The first one is cd for changing your directory. So if you want to go up a directory structure, you type cd and dot dot. I'll do that again. And now I will go to a different directory by simply typing its name, so cd. If you hit tab, it will autocomplete the name as well. Elements and gdal tutorial. Now from the command line, you can also execute a script or a program simply by typing its name. For Python, for example, that would be simply typing Python and then the script I've prepared, hello.py. And this prints out hello. To run a shell script, you would type bash and shell script right here. And if we want to run gdal from the command line, we simply type in our gdal command. For example, gdal info version. And this should print out the gdal version you have installed. If it tells you this command gdal info could not be found, either gdal is not correctly installed yet, or you need to set the path to your gdal installation folder in order to access it from any directory within your terminal. So make sure to get gdal running. I have some tips on how to do that in my first gdal tutorial, which I'll link up here. And let's change again to my tutorial folder and list all the files in there using the second command that you need for the command line, which is ls. Now you can see this prints out all the files that I have stored in this tutorial2 folder. Note if you are on Windows, the command to list all the files is not ls but dir. Okay, so let's take a short look at the data I've prepared for this tutorial. Now I have two GeoTIFF files right here. The first one is a digital elevation model, so a single band image. And then I also wanted to have a multi-band image. So I have this clip of a Sentinel-2 scene, which I downloaded using Google Earth Engine. If you want to find out how to do that, I have a video on that as well. To find out more about these datasets, we will use the function gdal-info. So make sure you're within the folder where your raster data is stored. And then you simply type gdal-info and your dataset. So let's look at the digital elevation model first. We will find here the size of the raster in pixels, its coordinate system, so you can see it's in UTM coordinates, the origin of the raster, so the upper left corner, pixel size, which is 5 by 5 meters, the location of all four corners, we have only one band to work with, and the no data value is minus 9999. 
If we want to get even more information on the raster stats, we can type g.info and would use the option stats. So now it prints out these values. So the maximum value of this raster data set is 3388 meters. You will also find the mean, the minimum, standard deviation and also the percentage of valid pixels. Let's look at the multiband image. So again we use GDAL info and put in our sentinel image and run this. Now you can see those things are basically the same but instead of only one band we have three bands right here because this is an RGB image. Of course sentinel2 scenes have more bands but I only selected the RGB bands. When I downloaded this dataset from Google Earth Engine I only downloaded the clipped raster file however no metadata. Therefore, GDAL does not really know how to interpret the colors of these three bands. So you can see it sets the first one to gray and the other two to undefined. This is, however, our blue band, green band, red band. So let's change the color interpretation for this file. To edit any information that gets printed out by GDAL info, you can use the function gdaledit.py. Now to change the color interpretation, we select the option color interp and set the band, so first band, and this is our blue band. Now we do the same thing for the other two bands. And then simply type the raster file for which we want to change that information, which is our Sentinel dataset. So now that we ran this, we check the information again using GDAL info and Sentinel. This color interpretation has now changed to the correct values, so blue, green, red. Let's find out how to convert between different raster formats and how to change the raster resolution. For that, we need the function GDAL translate. As you might have already noticed, GDAL commands always follow a specific structure. First of all, you have the command that you're calling, like for example, GDAL translate. Then you have a bunch of options, for example, option one, option two, option three, if you need to provide a value, you will put that right behind that. So for example, five. If you need to provide two values, you would put four and five. And after you have added all those options, you need to provide an input raster file. So let's call that input.tiff. If your function like GDAL info only needs an input file, no output file, you're good to go like this. However, if you're creating a new raster file, you need to provide an output file name as well, which would go right at the end here. So output.tiff. Okay, this is the general structure of a GDAL command. Let's find out how to adjust that for GDAL translate in order to convert our GeoTIFF file to a different format and also to resample it to a different resolution. If you're not sure which options to choose from, you can always go to the GDAL webpage and search for the command that you're using under programs. So GDAL translate is right here. So let's look at this. So here you find what this command generally does. And if we scroll down, you can find all the options that we can use. One important option that we will need today is the out format. And you can see we need to provide a format name. And if you want to look up all the raster formats that are supported by GDAL, you can scroll down here and go to raster drivers. And here is a list of all the available formats. So it's super long, most of them I don't really know, but if you have a certain raster format that you want, you would simply look up its short name and provide that as the out format. If you don't provide any out format, that's also fine. The program will simply guess it based on the file extension of your output raster. If we want to change our raster resolution, we will also need this TR option, which stands for a target resolution, where we will need to provide the new X and Y dimensions of our pixels in georeferenced units. So for our UTM coordinate system, that is meters. If we are resampling, we can also select a different resampling algorithm. The default is nearest neighbor, but we could change that using the R option and set that to bilinear or cubic, for example. Okay, let's go back to the command line and change this down here. So we have the command and then we said we need to provide an out format and 99% of the time I do use geotiff 
but let's take the NV format maybe because I've worked with that before. And then we also said we want to change the rest of resolution. So let's put that TR option and set a new resolution. So you remember the resolution of our digital elevation model was five by five meters. Let's set that to 10 by 10 meters. We will keep the nearest neighbor resampling method. So we just need our input now, which is the DEM. And an output file, let's call that DEM 10 meters. And we need a different extension for NV that's .bill. And let's see what we get. Okay, this is done, so let's list our files again. Okay, and now you can see we've gotten those two new files, dm10meters.bill and hdr, which are the two files that you get if you choose the NV format. Let's check if changing the resolution has worked as well. So GDAL info and dm10meters.bill. All right, and you can see the pixel size is now five by five meters anymore, but 10 by 10. We can do the exact same thing to our multiband Sentinel-2 image. And this produces two new files of our Sentinel-2 image in NV format. If we look at this image, it's still a multiband image, so we have all three bands right here. Sometimes you maybe only want to export certain bands to a new image, for example, those first two bands. To do that, you simply need to specify that under the command options using the option B. So that would be GDAL translate. Let's just write that to a new GeoTIFF and choose band one and band two. And this time we only have two bands left in our newly created GeoTIFF file. The last thing I want to show you is how to use the command GDAL warp to reproject and clip your raster data. Let's have a quick look at the documentation of GDAL warp on the GDAL webpage. The most important thing that you need to define is the source spatial reference, which is the current spatial reference of your data, and the target spatial reference, so the coordinate system that your new raster data should have. Let's reproject our digital elevation model first. Now our DEM is in UTM coordinates right now, and we have the EPSG code right here, so we will copy that, and then we type GDAL warp. And as our source spatial reference system, we provide an EPSG code, EPSG colon, and then the code we just copied before. And for our target spatial reference system, let's just project the entire DM to the WGS84, which has the EPSG code 4326. Okay, now we simply need our input DM and an output. So let's call that WGS84.tiff and run it. Now we did not provide a no data value, which is probably why this gets printed out right here. The reprojection did however work anyway. Let's make sure it really did. So GDAL info and DM WGS this one. Okay, now you can see we have successfully changed the coordinate system. Pretty straightforward, I would say, as long as you have the EPSG code, which you can always look up on the internet. Let's just quickly talk about what else GDAL warp can do. Now, if we look at those options, you can see similar to GDAL Translate, you can use GDAL Warp to also change the resolution of your raster file. And another important thing that we can do with GDAL Warp is clipping your raster file to a vector layer or coordinate extent. For that, we will need to provide a cut line, which is going to be a vector layer, and add the option Crop to Cut Line. I have already prepared a shapefile, which we are going to use as a cut line, which is this beautiful circle named mask right here. And let's just clip this DM to the circle using GDAL. Okay, again, we need GDAL warp. And then we will provide a cut line, which is our mask dot shape. Use the option crop to cut line. This time, let's provide a no data value and set that to minus 9,999. 
I do like to create an extra band for these no data values. You can do that using the DST alpha option and then again our DM as input. By the way, make sure your vector layer and your raster file have the same coordinate system. In my case, this mask is in UTM coordinates as well. So we use the old DM, not the reprojected one, and create an output file, name that DM clip .tif, and run it. Now here's the output raster file dm underscore clip, which is exactly what we wanted, so our original dm clip by our mask. I will quickly show you just what this dst alpha option does. So gl-info dm clip. This has just added another band to our dataset to identify no data values. Okay, really the final thing that we're going to do is clip another raster layer, however not using a vector file, but simply a coordinate extent. You can set a new target extent using the TE option and here you would put X min, Y min, X max, Y max. Now for that you do need to know in which kind of range of coordinates your dataset is located in. So either look at the corner coordinates using GDAL info or go into QJS and look at those coordinates down here. I'm going to clip the Sentinel 2 image and for that I've already defined my minimum and maximum X and Y values. So I'm just going to copy that right here. There they are. And then again, we set an alpha band, set the no data value, and take our Sentinel2 image as an input, and call the output just simply Sentinel2 clip. Okay, run this. And look at the result. Maybe I will turn that off. So here's the smaller clip of our Sentinel2 scene, which we created by simply providing a new extent. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we will look at raster calculation. So subscribe for more, leave your questions in the comments, and until next time.